Good morning, good morning. Glory to God, glory to God, glory to God. Thank you, Lord, thank you, Lord, and thank you for joining us here this morning at Transformation Community Church, where our vision is to transform the lives of people through the word of God and the love of Christ everywhere. And we just want to thank you this morning for taking time to join us here at Transformation Community Church. I know you have many places of worship in your lives, so we just thank you for taking your time to come join us in our morning worship here at Transformation Community Church. My name is Jason Flowers, and I'm the pastor here at Transformation Community Church. And again, thank you for taking time to join us here this morning. Um, before I get into the word today, we just want to take some time out and we want to pray. So if you could just bow your heads in prayer. Uh, dear Father, we just thank you for this day, dear Father, our daily bread. We just thank you for your love, your grace, and your mercy, dear Father. We just thank you for things being as well as they are, dear Father. We just thank you for loving us in spite of a wretch like me, dear Father. We just thank you for being a provider, dear Father. We just thank you for being a healer, dear Father. And we just thank you for being a way maker, dear Father. Dear Father, we just thank you for opening doors that were once closed, dear Father. We just thank you for closing doors that no longer needed to be opened, dear Father. Dear Father, we just thank you for opening the floodgates of heaven and pouring out a blessing on us each and every day, dear Father. We just thank you for your son, Jesus Christ, who died on the cross for the remission of our sins, dear Father, and who gave us life so we can have it more abundantly, dear Father. So in the name of Jesus and the power of your blood, dear Father, we're just asking for peace. Peace on all sides, dear Father, in the name of Jesus and the power of your blood, dear Father. We're asking for patience. This is a time where we need patience with one another, dear Father. There's so much going on in the world. We just need to exhibit patience. Dear Father, in the name of Jesus and the power of your blood, we're just asking for strength where we are weak, dear Father. Dear Father, in the name of Jesus and the power of your blood, dear Father, we're just asking for wisdom. Just give us wisdom, dear Father, to help make good choices and decisions, dear Father. And in the name of Jesus and the power of your blood, dear Father, we ask, dear Father, that you just open doors, dear Father, that you just continue to make a way for us, dear Father, that you just continue to walk alongside of us, beside us, dear Father, on each side of us, above us, dear Father, and just make our pathways straight, dear Father. Yeah. Dear Father, we know that you've gone before us, dear Father, to make a way, dear Father. We're just asking that we can just be patient and endure because your love endures forever that we will see it on the other side, dear Father. We ask, dear Father, that you just hide me behind the cross in the name of Jesus and the power of your blood, dear Father, that you just hide me behind the cross yeah. so that the people will hear a word from you and nothing from me. Yes. We ask it all in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen yeah. and amen. Yeah. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. And we got a word for you this morning, and I hope that the word will be edifying to your soul. So today's message is going to come from the book of Psalms. So if you have your Bibles ready, Bible people, get your Bibles ready. It's going to come from the book of Psalms. Uh, we're going to spend some time understanding what it means to thank the Lord and what it means to actually praise the Lord. Amen? Amen. Amen. So the name Psalm refers to string instruments. For example, a harp, a lyre, or a lute. And it's used as an accompaniment to sing songs. Uh, the traditional Hebrew title means praises. So psalm really means praises, even though many of the psalms or praises are really prayers. They're really prayers going up to the Lord. Amen. Amen. So the psalm is not a book of doctrine, meaning it's not a book of beliefs. It's a book of prayers. It's rather, for the most part, a book of prayer to the Lord and praise unto the Lord. Hallelujah. So it speaks to God in prayer. It also speaks to God in prayer and professions of faith. Remember that faith and trust. Remember that faith and trust. Mm -hmm. So at the very core of theology of the psalm is the conviction that the gravitational center of life in creation is God. God is sovereign. Amen. He is the king of kings and the Lord of lords. The Lord created the, the whole earth and therein of it. So the Lord is sovereign. He is over everything here on earth. So now that you have some background on Psalm, let's see what it really means to thank the Lord and also what it means to praise the Lord. You ready? Yeah. Let's, go. let's go. So what does it mean to praise the Lord? So if you could go to Psalms 100 and we'll take Psalms 100 and you'll see it's called a Psalm of Thanksgiving. Mm -hmm. So let's read it. It says, shout with the Lord all the earth. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come before him singing with joy. 
acknowledge that the Lord is God. He made us, we are his. We are his people, the sheep of his pasture. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving. Hallelujah, thanksgiving. Go into his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and praise his name. For the Lord is good. His unfailing love continues forever. And his faithfulness continues to each generation. So that is Psalms 100, and that is a psalm of thanksgiving. So you see, we thank the Lord for all that he has done for us and provided for us. For example, we thank the Lord for another day. Amen. We thank the Lord for food, for provision, the food that we eat each and every day. We thank the Lord for a house, for a roof over our head. We thank the Lord for our job, for having a job to go to each and every day. And we also thank the Lord for saving a loved one that we've been praying for. So you have those who are in the hospital, those who may be going through situations or circumstances. We offer a prayer to them and we thank the Lord for those prayers. Amen. Amen. So let's look and see what it means to actually praise the Lord. There's a difference between thanking the Lord and we all should be thankful. The Bible says we should be thankful in all circumstances, in all situations. We should always give thanks. Amen. It says, be anxious for nothing, but in prayer and petition um, with thanksgiving. Remember that with thanksgiving, make your request be made known uh, to God and the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding will guard your, guide your heart and your mind in Christ Jesus. That's what the Bible says, amen? So we should always be thankful. So there's another level that we go to from thankful, and that is praising the Lord. That is praising the Lord. It's more meaningful than thanking him, amen? Amen. So let's turn to Psalms 150. So if you could turn to Psalms 150, and let's read that. Let's read Psalms 150. So in Psalms 150, it says, it starts out, praise the Lord. That is the very first thing you read in Psalms 150. Praise the Lord. And it says, praise God in his sanctuary. Praise him in his mighty heaven. Praise him for his mighty works. Praise his unequaled greatness. Praise him with the blast of the ram's horn. Praise him with the lyre and harp. Praise him with the tambourine and dancing. Praise him with strings and flutes. Praise him with a clash of cymbals. Praise him with loud clanging cymbals. Let everything that breathes sing praises unto the Lord. Hallelujah. That is a word right there. Praise the Lord. If you see how that scripture goes, everything began with praise the Lord. Praise him. Praise him. Praise him. So Psalms 150 is not only a beautiful expression of praise, it's also a lesson in praising the Lord. It tells us this. It tells us where to praise the Lord. It tells us why to praise the Lord. It tells us how we are to praise the Lord. And it tells us who should be offering praises unto the Lord. Amen. So let's take a deeper look at this. Let's go to verse one where it says, and we're going to talk about in verse one. It says, where do we praise the Lord? So verse one says, in God's sanctuary in mighty heavens. In God's sanctuary in mighty heavens. So in Psalms 43 and 4, it says, There I will go to the altar of God, to God, the source of all my joy. How many of y'all want some joy in your life? How many of y'all want some joy in your life? How many of you tired of being down? How many of you tired of being in despair? How many of you tired of just being broken, broken hearted? And you want some joy in your life? Well, here it says, There I will go into the altar of God, to God, the source of all my joy. God is the source of our joy. I will praise him with my heart, O oh God, my God. He is your God. Wherever we are in this world is a place to praise the one who created all things because your praise is in your heart. So it doesn't matter where you go in this world, no matter if you are at home, no matter if you're on your job, no matter if you're at school, no matter where you go, if you're traveling or anywhere you go, the Lord is with you. You should be able to praise the Lord wherever you go because the Lord is in your heart. Amen. Amen. The sanctuary is in your heart. Amen. Amen. Heaven is found in your heart. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. Help me somebody. So tell your neighbor, sing forth his praises. Sing forth his praises. So let's go to, let's go to verse number two. And it tells us very specifically, why do we praise the Lord? Why do we praise him? In verse two, 
We praise God because of what he does. He performs mighty acts. Mm -hmm. Our Lord provides mighty acts. Think about your life and think what you what he's brought you through. I mean, think about the times where you where some places you shouldn't have been, the Lord brought you out, and then some things that may have happened because you were with the wrong people, and the Lord brought you out mm -hmm. because of his mighty acts. Think about times where you were just down and down and out, didn't have anything, didn't even know where your next meal was gonna come from, but the Lord provided a mighty act. So the Lord is a provider. Think about the Gospels. It says he fed the multitudes not only once, but twice. He fed the multitudes on one day. He fed 5,000 on one day and came back the very next day and fed 4,000. So he, he feeds the multitudes. So that is an increase your faith type of action. You got to increase your faith, people of God. You got to increase your faith and know that the Lord is a provider. He can do everything but fail. The Lord is a way maker. He'll fight your battles. Think about Jericho, the battle of Jericho. That was all God. God fought that battle for them. So here's my question too. How many battles has the Lord fought for you? How many times has the enemy just counted you out? You know, he, he left you there for dead. You were roadkill. He left you on the side of the road for roadkill. How many of you know that what the devil meant for, for, for evil, the Lord meant for good? The Lord meant for good. The Lord will fight your battles. You don't have to do anything but turn it over to the Lord. The Bible says, be still and know that I am God. You don't have to do anything but get on your knees and praise the Lord. And the Lord will fight all of your battles, not just some, but all of your battles. He didn't say pick and choose. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. He said, if you honor me, if you have faith in me, if you trust me, mm -hmm. I will fight all your battles. Amen. Amen. How many of y'all know that victory is yours? Hallelujah. Jesus Christ died on the, on the cross and he gave us victory. Victory yes. is yours. You, Help me somebody. Hmm. How many of y'all know that the Lord is a healer? Yes, he is. No, he, in the Bible, it talks about he, he helps those that are blind come to see. Those that were sick and maimed, he healed them. Uh, he had lepers that came his way, he healed them. But I was, think about this. How many of y'all know that the Lord would just heal your soul? How many of you know that some people are just broken hearted and broken down? Their soul is just in a bad place. But the Lord will heal your, heal your soul. That's, just, that's what it says in Jeremiah 17 and 14. The Lord speaks specifically on healing your soul. We're all people. I mean, we're all people and our soul is to be cherished. Our soul is to be honored. Yeah. Our soul is the most important thing that we have. Mm -hmm. And the Lord will heal your soul if you let him. Yeah. The Bible says, hey, I am here knocking, talking about the Lord. It says, I'm here knocking. Yeah. If you let me in, I will come dying with you. Yeah. He just wants you to let him into your heart. Yeah. He just wants you to let him into, 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 his, into your heart. So he can be a part of everything that you do. Amen? Amen. 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 And how many of you know that the Lord is a protector? Yes. The Lord will protect you from all hurt, harm, and danger. So think about the story of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego found in Daniel 3 and 23. Mm -hmm. uh, it's three people, three, three young men went into the fire, mm -hmm. but then there was someone else in there with them. Yeah. They, were, they were set to burn. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the king set them in there to burn. But they went in, three of them went in based off of their faith. They said, hey, I'm going in because I'm not going to bow down to anyone's king. I'm going into the fire because I believe in my God. Right. Amen. Mm -hmm. They went in. And how many of y'all know that? You know the story. You, you, yes. you all know the story. Mm -hmm. He protected them. Yes, he, he protected them. Not only that, he was in the fire with, with them. them. Yep. So the Lord is not a God that's millions of miles away. The Lord is right there with Amen. you every Amen. step of the way. Amen. Amen. So he is a protector. Mm -hmm. So you got to increase your trust. Yes. That's a trust thing. Mm -hmm. Increase your trust. So the main thing I want you to understand is you got to increase your faith mm -hmm. and you have to increase your trust. Right. Amen. 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 So, and then the other thing is, why do we praise God? Is because of his excellent greatness. Mm -hmm. So in Chronicles, 1 Chronicles 29 and 11, it says, Yours, O Lord, is the greatness, the power, the glory, the victory, and the majesty. Mm -hmm. Everything in the heavens on earth is yours. Right. O Lord, and this is your kingdom. We adore you as the one who is over all things. Our, our God is great. He created the heavens and the earth. Amen. There's nothing that our God can't do. He can do everything but fail. His excellent greatness is another reason why we should praise the Lord. Amen. 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 
So let's get to verses uh, three and five, three through five. And this talks about specifically how we should praise the Lord in verse three through five. So you see, it talks about uh, clanging of cymbals, clanging of horns, clanging of lyre, all of those things. So, so this is how you should praise the Lord. You should praise the Lord loudly. Yeah. Amen. Amen. You can praise the Lord softly. Right. Everybody praises the Lord differently. Mm -hmm. You can praise the Lord soothingly. Mm -hmm. Amen. You can praise the Lord enthusiastically. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. You can praise the Lord rhythmically. Some people like to dance in their praise. Amen. Amen. You can praise the Lord boldly. Paul praised the Lord boldly. Mm -hmm. you, can, you can stand on your soapbox and praise the Lord boldly. You can profess the, 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 the word of God wherever you go. You can be bold in your praise. You can praise the Lord unexpectedly. How many times have you, someone has come up to you and the Lord just told you, you need to witness to that person right now. Give that person the word. Encourage that person right now. That's unexpectedly. And you can praise the Lord fearlessly. You can go anywhere, any place, anytime. And you can say, hey, I'm praising the Lord no matter what. I don't care what's going on around me. I don't care what you all are doing. I am a peculiar person. And the Lord says we are peculiar people. We should be able to fearlessly praise the Lord wherever we are. And here's, here's the thing I like about this, people of God. If none of these work for you, just praise the Lord the best way you can. There are many ways to praise the Lord. There's no one set way to praise the Lord. But here's the thing. You got to praise the Lord. However you want to do it, you have to praise the Lord. Help me somebody. So in, I'll read in Judges 5 and 3, it says, Hear, O ye kings, give ear, O ye princes, I, even I, will sing unto the Lord. I will sing praises unto the Lord of Israel. Amen. 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 So that's what I like about it. We have to praise the Lord no matter where we are, and we should praise him however we like to praise him. Amen. Amen. It says praise him with the blast of horn, mm -hmm. praise him with the lyre and harp, mm -hmm. praise him with tambourine and dancing. Hey, we just got to praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So, so the, the last verse is verse six. So in verse six, it says, who should praise the Lord? Who should praise the Lord? It is very clear. It says, everything that has breath should praise the Lord. Help me somebody. So that means young and old. It means rich and poor. It means strong and weak. Every living creature should praise the Lord. If you have breath in your body right now, the Lord woke you up this yes. morning and set your feet on solid ground, allowed you to have limbs that are moving, eyes that's open, right. ears that hear. If the Lord has just put you on, and if you don't have any of that, if you're breathing, yeah. if you're breathing, mm -hmm. no matter what your circumstance or situation is, if you're breathing, you should be praising the Lord. There are millions of people that woke up that didn't really wake up. Amen. There's a million of people that, you know, they woke up, meaning that they've gone on to be with the Lord if that if they lived a righteous life, but they really didn't wake up. There are people that's dying every day, every day. But if you don't have your right your life right with the Lord right now, now is a good time. Tomorrow's not guaranteed. It's either you're going to live a righteous life or an unrighteous life. It's your choice. Amen? Amen. Amen. But the biggest thing is every living creature should praise the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 So let's close like this. God's will is for everyone to whom he gave breath of life to use that breath to acknowledge his power and greatness. Amen. 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 We praise him for who he is and what he has done, not only for what he's done. So, so catch this. Let me say it again. Catch this. It says we praise him for who he is and what he has done, not only for what he has done. So that first part is two things. We got to praise him for who he is and what he's done, not just only for what he's done. Amen. Right. Amen. So let's say, what has he done for us? What has the Lord done for us? For his redeeming death on the cross. Glory to God. His resurrection from the dead. Hallelujah. His ascension into the heavens. Yes. Glory to God. And now he is the one seated at the right hand of the Father. Help me somebody. Help me somebody. So the Bible says, praise ye the Lord, for he is worthy to be praised. 
Hallelujah. It says, praise ye the Lord, for he is worthy to be praised. People of God, I want you to understand there's nothing that you're going through right now. Of course, we got chaos. We got things going on in the world. We got protests. We got rioting. We got looting. We still have an uncommon amount of, uh, of deaths, homicides across cities. We have homelessness. We have people that are hungry in the world. There, there, there's just so many things going on. I don't want anyone to get caught on COVID-19 or I don't want anyone to just get caught on uh, on on the death of black men to, uh, at the hands of police brutality. Just don't get caught on one thing. There are a number of plagues going on in the world that we need to latch on to and be reminded of that, hey, the Lord is sovereign. He is over everything. The Lord loves you and the Lord loves me. All we have to do is put our faith and trust in him and he will make a way. Hallelujah. 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 So my brothers and sisters, the Bible says, praise ye the Lord for he is worthy to be praised. My brothers and sisters, make it your choice to praise him. Make it your choice to praise him. So praise him, praise him, praise him, praise him. Jesus, blessed Savior, he's worthy to be praised. Praise him. Praise him, praise him, praise him. Jesus, blessed Savior, he's worthy to be praised. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Glory to God. Glory to God. Thank you for your word today, Lord. Thank you for your word today, Lord. I thank you for Psalms 150, dear Father. It starts out with praise the Lord and it ends with praise the Lord. Thank you, Lord, for allowing us to understand how to praise you. Glory to God. We thank you for your abundance of love. We thank you for your abundance of forgiveness, dear Father. We just thank you for what you're doing in the lives of your people in the name of Jesus and the power of your blood, dear Father. We just go forth giving you all the praise, glory, and honor because you are worthy to be praised. In the mighty name of Jesus, I pray. Amen, amen. and amen. Amen, amen. At this time, I'd like to open the doors of the church. My wife Renee and I and the people here at Transformation Community Church are here to welcome you with open arms. Mm -hmm. We just want to love you and we just want to share the love of Christ with you. Amen. 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 So if you need prayer at this time, please give us a call at 480 Five two four seven zero eight zero, or you could always email us at Transformation Community Church one. That's the number one at gmail.com. We would love to pray for you. If you want to be saved, please call us at four eight zero five two four seven zero eight zero, or just send us an email at Transformation Community Church one at gmail.com. It would be our honor to lead you down the road to Romans a road that leads to Christ. If you want to join our church, and we would love to have you as a member here at Transformation Community Church, um, please call us at 480-524-7080. And you can always email us at transformationcommunitychurch1 at gmail.com. We would love to connect with you. And lastly, if you would love to su support our ministry, and we would uh, honor you in your, in your support of our ministry, Financially, please just send it to Cash App, uh, dollar sign Transformation AZ. That's through Cash App, dollar sign Transformation AZ, and just put uh, Transformation Community Church in the notes. Or uh, if you like Venmo, you can also go the Venmo route, and that is uh, at Transformation AZ. And again, just put Transformation Community Church in the notes. Amen. 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 And until next time. May the Lord bless and keep you. May the Lord shine his face upon you and be gracious unto you. And may the Lord lift his countenance upon you and give you peace. Just know that I love you. 
God loves you even more. Have a most favorite week. Amen and amen. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord.